Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game to video. Today we're taking a look at Mirim Sentinel Worm as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, featuring the 6 mana 6-6 six, six legendary dragon spirit from Baldur's Gate with flying and ward 2, saying whenever another non-token dragon enters a battlefield under our control, create a token that's a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary, which is a big upside as a lot of our curve toppers are indeed legendary. So we're a teamer colored dragon ramp deck as we do need quite a bit of acceleration to get to 6 and some more mana. A lot of the new exciting dragons from Baldur's Gate also tend to be quite expensive, so they can benefit from a bit of a ramp. So first off, let's take a look at all our dragons, starting out with some of our 2-drops. Fearsome Whelp to discount our dragons, very powerful. We've got a Reckless Barbarian, a 2-2 that can be sacrificed to add double red, so it can help ritual out some of our more expensive cards. Also great to copy it with our Sentinel Worm, as we'll get to essentially generate extra mana in the process. We've got Seal to Nurture, which can help us ramp, gaining a bit of life in the process when casting dragon spells. And then at the Scale Singer lets us take a look at the top card of our library and then cast dragon spells off the top, so it can provide a nice bit of card advantage there as well. Then at 3 mana we've got Faceless Agent as a changeling, so it also counts as a dragon and can find another dragon when it enters a battlefield. We've got a few Sagas with the Dragon Kami Reborn, which can maybe help us cheat some expensive dragons into play. And then Fable of the Mirror Breaker, just a good card in any red brawl deck and no exception here. We can even copy some of the non-legendary tokens that we get from our Sentinel Worm, otherwise the Reflection is unable to copy legendary creatures. And then at 4 mana, Moonveil Regent, excellent in a three color deck providing extra card advantage, maybe dealing damage when it dies. Town Razor Tyrant can deal damage to the opponent or they have to sacrifice one of their lands. We've got the Blazing Sky and the whole cycle of legendary dragons from Kamigawa. We've got the Thunderbreak Regent as kind of a nice tribal card that will punish the opponent for targeting our dragons. Varric's Bladewing is quite versatile, can play it with Kicker to get an extra dragon token. Then at 5 mana, Desert Doom, also quite powerful as it has a bit of built-in protection. We've got Goldspan Dragon, despite the alchemy nerf, still a worthy inclusion. We've got Demanding Dragon, great to double it with our commander, as that will quickly add up. We've got Glorybringer as a dragon that can take out opposing creatures, one of the best 5 mana dragons out there. We've got Scargon Hellkite with Riot, so either haste or a plus one counter, and then we can also use it as removal. We've got Terror of the Peaks, which is amazing in multiples, especially once we start copying multiple dragons, can close out the game very quickly. We've got a new addition here with a Wrathful Red Dragon, which also punishes the opponent for dealing damage to our dragons. And then the Boundless Sky, another one of these Kamigawa dragons that can also provide value when it dies. And then our curve toppers include some of the ancient dragons from Baldur's Gate, including the ancient copper dragon, which can generate treasure kind of randomly after rolling a d20 if it hits the opponent. We've got the green one, which is the bronze dragon, which adds plus one counters equal to the amount we roll with a d20. And then the blue one is the ancient silver dragon at eight mana, which will draw cards equal to the result. So all of these ancient dragons will greatly benefit from having haste, which is why we also included Invigorating Hot Spring and a Rhythm of the Wild as enchantments that can give our creatures haste, so we can maybe connect with them right away. We've also got Inferno of the Storm Mounts as an uncounterable threat. We've got Lathless as another great dragon payoff, generating extra dragon tokens. We've got Dracoseth as a great removal dragon, also benefiting from haste a lot. We've got the Old Gnawbone, which can generate a ton of treasure to help us empty our hand. Then we've got Earthquake Dragon, which gets a nice discount if we have dragons in play, and then a Tantan Flying Trample that can also come back from our graveyard. And then taking a look at the rest of our deck, of course we do need a lot of acceleration and ramp cards, so we can cast our commander and our expensive dragons in the first place. At 2 mana we've got Orb of Dragonkind, having additional utility to find dragons, and then some uh, sorceries to help us ramp with Explore into the north to go with our Snowlands as well. Wolf Willow Haven, 
and Grow Spiral, and then some ramp artifacts with Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone. Then at 3 mana we also get to make use of the new orbs, which were added in Baldur's Gate, with a blue one letting us scry 2 when we cast a dragon. The red one gives our dragon haste, so kind of similar to the enchantments, great with our ancient dragons especially. And then the green orb will put a plus one counter on our dragon when it enters. Then we've got Sarkon as one of the few planeswalkers in the deck, which can also help us ramp into our dragons by adding two mana with a second plus one, has some additional utility as well. Cultivate another great three mana sorcery to find two basic lands, putting one in play tapped. And then a Dragon's Horde can provide card advantage when dragons enter. And the Celeste is another great three mana artifact that provides a bit of card selection. And then at 4 mana we've got more artifacts with Key to the Archive, one of the most powerful ramp artifacts in Historic Brawl. And then Hedron Archive can also be quite effective, as we can still maybe play one of our 2 mana ramp artifacts afterwards, or tap it for mana, so we can essentially make use of it right away. Then we've got a few more ramp sorceries with Vastwood Surge and Migration Path. Then Chandra can come down on turn 3 if we have a 2 mana ramp card, and then maybe kill a creature and then start generating extra mana with the second plus 1, or maybe provide card advantage with the first plus 1. And then a Sarkon Wonder to Shiv can also give our dragons a discount or conjure copies of Shiv and Dragon into our hand. And then we already mentioned our enchantments to give haste. And then as a final category is a little bit of extra interaction. Cards that are maybe just too powerful to ignore if we're playing team or colors. And those include a wash away as a one mana counter for opposing commanders. In blue we also have time warp to take an extra turn. And a reverse rebuke to bounce all opposing permanents back. And then we've got a few on-theme burn spells with a Dragon's Fire, which can deal a ton of damage if we reveal a dragon from our hand or in play. We've got a Breath Weapon, which deals 2 damage to each non-dragon creature at instant speed, and Spit Flame dealing 4 damage to a creature, and can get it back from our graveyard if we pay a red when a dragon enters. And then Lightning Bolt, also just too efficient not to play. And then our mana base has 40 lands, as many untapped lands as possible, also need quite a few basics for the various ramp sorceries that go looking for basic lands. Don't have a lot of creature lands, since we're going to be busy casting expensive dragons instead. A few channel lands here with Soaring City and Buseju, and then for the most part a lot of mana fixing, and as many dual lands that come into play untapped as possible. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, facing Jacob Hauken, which is known for its counter spells. So having access to a Rhythm to give our creatures a Riot and Uncounterable seems quite relevant. And then we've got some cheap removal to deal with Jacob to prevent it from transforming. So overall, decent hand for the matchup. Which could otherwise be pretty tough if the opponent can just counter our expensive dragons. Okay, forest is good. Turn to signets. And then might already want to play Rhythm of the Wild, or we can keep developing our mana with the Celestis. Opponent going for a gaze to set up their draw step. Milling an island. Could already see Jacob, but opponent is gonna play it slow. And then now Sarkon, also appealing, or we can just play Celestis. Don't mind going for Sarkon, even though we don't have a dragon outside of our commander to ramp into. Can still loot with it as well. Play land first in case of a conditional counterspell. That resolves. And then we may discard a card and then draw. And discarding Spitflame is an option since we can get it back later. Although, could also see just discarding Breath Weapon. Palladium Mirror for ramp. That one is also worth taking out. So let's start by... Let's see, I can add two mana to play our commander already. Although letting the opponent untap with Mirror is scary. Alternatively, we can add two mana with Sarkon to play Boundless Sky, pay the one, pick up Spitflame, but it doesn't solve the mirror problem. 
could also loot, hoping to find an untapped land so we can play Celestus and still a 3 mana play afterwards, either Rhythm or Breath Weapon. So definitely have some options. There's a chance we can Breath Weapon and deal with both creatures next turn. So maybe we go for kind of the high roll play of discarding to set up our Celestus into Rhythm. Or I can just play Rhythm and kind of play it safe. Alright, let's do that instead. Play this tapped, and then we can plus. But I don't think I'm gonna discard anything. Maybe Celestus can go. I guess drawing a land would be fine too at this stage. Alright, there we go. So next turn we can play our commander. And it will be uncounterable. Or we can... Breath Weapon, and deal with both Jacob and Mir. It's going to be Hedron Archive instead, so opponent maybe just going to hard cast whatever expensive cards they have. Attacks Sarkon for two. Rebuke's not bad, although I don't have the double blue to cast it. So Sarkon can add mana, but still won't let us play Sentinel and Breath Weapon. Although we could Breath Weapon, and then using the mana from Sarkon play Boundless Sky. Which deals with at least a mirror. That's definitely an option as well. Getting Sentinel Worm in play... Would be nice, but I think we need to stop whatever the opponent is doing. And... Uh, with Boundless Sky, we at least present a bit of a threat. So, we'll try that approach. Breath Weapon, Kill Mirror. And play Boundless Sky. And then we'll go with Haste over plus one counter. Don't have the mana to pay for. Our uh, Spit Flame. So now we're hoping to just draw an extra blue source for Rivers Rebuke. Earthquake Dragon could be interesting too. Let's see here. If we add two mana, do we have enough? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Not quite. So I guess it's going to be Sentinel Worm, and then we'll add the mana. So we return our Spit Flame. The alternative was looting in the hopes of hitting a blue source for Rebuke. And then haste seems fine. So our opponent will get to transform Jacob if they'd like. Although we can still bounce the enchantment with Rebuke. And we're attacking for 10 here. So yeah, it's gonna be close. If our opponent can cheat an Omniscience in play, we could just be dead. So that's the risk of flooding Jacob on tap. Although also possible they would have some protection in hand by now to protect our commander. Alright, so our opponent pays to transform insights, and it's gonna be a free Nezahal Primal Tide. Not actually all that threatening when we can just play a hasty Earthquake Dragon here. And that'll win us the game. So yeah, Rhythm of the Wilds, giving all our dragons haste, and making them uncounterable. And we get two Earthquake Dragons, because why not? And attack for 20. And our opponent explodes, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play in the mirror match. And uh, yeah, starting out with some good ramp cards is probably where we want to be in the matchup, and then hope the dragons follow into the north can grab one of our snow dual lands. Glorybringer, not the best in the matchup as it doesn't deal damage to opposing dragons. So we'll get a blue red fjord here. Opponent also agreeing with the choice of pet, which is nice to see. And here we could go Celestus plus Mindstone, or we can play Key. If they have some sort of interaction, maybe like an Abrade, I would rather double spell. 
So let's go Celestus plus Mindstone. And then, yeah, next turn already play Sentinel Worm. So off to the faster start. Still gotta watch out for counter spells. It's gonna be an orb. Alright, so if they have a wash away exactly, that would be bad. Otherwise, we should be good to go. And then, guess we'll reveal Barbarian and name Red. Uh oh, they have wash away. They do, ouch. Yeah, that's the one answer. So, Sentinel Worm back in the command zone. Opponent up to 5 mana for Celestus. Crossroads enters tapped, so won't be able to replay Sentinel Worm. So at that point, probably go for key to the archive. And then a Time Warp or a Crozen Grip. Crozen Grip to destroy their artifact isn't bad, so they won't be able to play Sentinel Worm on curve next turn. Or we can just counter their dragon, which is probably better. We have double blue up. And then I do want to play Crossroads. So I guess uh, Barbarian can go. And we can scry, naming blue. And just looking for more expensive dragons. Soaring City, probably not good enough. Okay. So let's hope they try and tap out for their commander. So we can return the favor. Dragon Turtle flashed in. That's okay. And then we do have Celestus to potentially dig for additional dragons. Alright, let's counter the worm. Can maybe let them scry first. Scry 2 does quickly add up, so it's also going to help them in the late game. That worked. And now we should be able to resolve our commander at long last. And can double up on our Nurture. Although holding it to discard to Celestis is also reasonable. So we do have a bit of a mana advantage over the opponents, but they have the card selection with Orb. Keeps both on top. That's scary. Okay, Desert Doom, not bad. So, Glorybringer, again, doesn't deal damage to dragons. So, maybe we just play both dragons to kind of develop a board. And then uh, kind of take it from there. And then next turn activate Celestus to maybe dig for something more exciting. Desert Doom also pretty good once we're empty-handed. And then I should use these to gain some life. And then now I'm probably okay trading off my commander since we got some nice value from it. Opponent takes six. But yeah, this game could still go either way, despite us having a pretty explosive turn here. As our opponent plays double... Boundless Sky, which can trade off for our dragons and still leave something behind. Alright, time for Celestus. Also lets the opponent loot, so it does have a bit of a drawback. Time Warp, okay. Not bad, although... We're not actually ahead on board where we can attack and make use of the extra turn all that much. So I'm not actually sure if we should even cast it here. I think I keep it in hand and then for now we'll just pass. Or I could try to draw with Mindstone. I guess we have enough mana now that it's fine. Alright, just a land we'll keep in hand to discard. Something like a River's Rebuke could win us the game, bouncing all the opponent's stuff back. Opponent goes digging with Windfall. 
And the red dragon just dealing some damage. Could be worse. But orbs crying towards more action. Celestus triggers, both get to loot. And an Earthquake Dragon for one mana, I'll take it. Okay, so that might be reason enough to Time Warp. I guess we can Celestus first. And then we still have enough mana to Time Warp, I think. Find Drunkoseth, okay. Mountain can go. So now do we wait for Drunkoseth? Can I Drunkoseth and do anything else? I can't. Yeah, I would really like to Drunkoseth plus Time Warp, although that's not going to be easy to set up. So maybe we just Drunkoseth now and then, yeah, next turn, hope that we still have our Drunko Seths in play and then we should be able to completely decimate the opponent's board. So we'll pass. Two cards in hand. Hope there's no big sweeper. Celestus finds Ancient Silver Dragon. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good, although so is Earthquake Dragon. I guess we can pick this back up from the graveyard still. Although we wouldn't be able to Ancient Dragon and Time Warp, which is probably the most powerful sequence. Okay, two cards in hand. Beast Whisper, that's alright. And yeah, it's go time here. We can play our Earthquake Dragon, or we can Time Warp first. Play Moonveil Regent. Play Earthquake Dragon, and then Regent draws. We attack with double Drunkoseth, killing pretty much all of the opponent's board, or we could maybe keep some mana around to pay for Ward. And that's game, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Lagrella, which has a bit of built-in removal. Our hand looks somewhat sketchy without green mana for growth spiral. So I think we have to mulligan. And this is better. Got some early ramp with nurture and orb. Difficult to keep a hand that doesn't have some early acceleration, preferably at two mana, but sometimes if we have a nice, maybe, 3-mana ramp card into 5-mana dragon, it can be keepable. So, for now, play Nurture. They can eventually exile it with Lagrella. But not before we make use of our extra mana to play, let's say, Sarkon here. And then... Probably fine to conjure a Sheevan Dragon, since we don't have a ton of dragons to give a discount to with a plus. Visionary to draw. Now what? Maybe fine to play Sarkom. Let's see, can we go Orb into Sarkom? I guess we'll still be short of actually playing Bladewing with uh, mana. So maybe we discount our dragons. Then play Sarkon. And then we'll play Varix. Without Kicker. Just to get a board presence going here. And then I could tap this to gain a bit of life. And then next turn with Sarkon we can play our Sentinel Worm. Start copying Sheevan Dragons, like Richard Garfield intended. Temple to Scry. 
opponent could run out a Lagrella here if they'd like. They do. And goes for both their creature and our nurture, so they might have ways to flicker it. Which would make sense. Okay, so this is making mana. And then... What else do we want to do? Can play Sentinel Worm, and that's it. And then conjure another Sheevan Dragon. Alternatively... Let's see, if I play this... Discount Sheevan Dragon, I could play that. So if they're planning to flicker this... They could try and take out my Sentinel Worm as well, if they have, like, a very cheap flicker effect. Otherwise, I'm probably fine just playing this, and then... Play a tapped Steam Vents, conjure another Sheevan Dragon. Or we can kill Lagrella with our uh, Sarkon, which is also an option. Although they could have a protection spell in place. Yeah, that's fine, we'll bait it out here. That worked, so they do get their visionary back, but at least we won't have to worry about a flicker effect exiling our sentinel worm. Play that tapped, and then yeah, we'll keep our blade wing on defense, I think, in case they deal with the sentinel worm, we can still block visionary. And then next turn it's time for as many Sheevan dragons as possible. I think I'm blocking like so, in case of a pump effect. Although possible blocking with Worm would have worked. And begin anew to wipe the board anyway. Okay, that works. So we can keep on ramping. Let's see if we add two mana. Then I can actually just replay Sentinel Worm, which is okay. If I go Orb into the north, then if I discount Sheevan Dragon and add two mana, I could play it. But that's less exciting than getting our Worm going. So we'll do that. And conjure another Sheevan Dragon. If they replay Lagrella, they wouldn't be able to pay for the ward. So that's not a concern. It's gonna be Cultivate for Ramp. And Inspiring Overseer, getting that plus one plus one from Begin and You. Okay. So I think we wanna discount our dragons now. And then start copying Sheevan Dragon, basically. Can ultimate or Sarkon too. So let's see, we've got six, seven, eight mana. So can't play both Sheevan Dragons, so in that case, play Orb. And can play Signet, and then play Sheevan Dragon still. And hit for six. Put on chumps. Might be another sweeper in our future. But at least we've got a lot of mana. So it's not a disaster. Now they could go after our tokens, but then they're still gonna be pretty far behind, so Wrath of God wipes the board. So don't think I'll be ultimating Sarkon until we get a bit more loyalty going, so we can actually keep it in play, since the extra mana's been useful. Now, Sentinel Worm costs 10 mana. It's getting a bit pricey, but can also exile it with Lagrella to remove it as a blocker. So I might have to take a turn off without Sentinel Worm. And let's see here. I guess last turn I probably could have scryed with Orb and didn't to play a Sheevan Dragon, but that's okay. Let us add some more mana. 
and then continue ramping and playing Sheevan Dragons. This is for toughness, so can't take it out. So probably want to shuffle before we scry. Get one of our snow dual lands. And blue-green looks good. And then not gonna tap orb just yet. Like so. And then play Sheevan Dragon. And Ancient Bronze Dragon looks fun. So we'll keep that on top. Don't have a way to give it haste. Opponent could play Lagrella, Exile Sheevan Dragon. And then pressure our Planeswalkers. But they might want to exile the Guard Mage. So they get it back if we kill their commander. It's gonna be Knight of Autumn, can blow up our orb maybe. Still have Celestus to provide a bit of card selection. So yeah, lots of creatures with ETB effects to kinda recycle with Lagrella. And then the sweepers get all those creatures back and reset the board. Opponent goes for a rogue refiner first. And a Nico. Okay. So that can attack Sarkon. And picks it back up. Yeah, not having haste on the Ancient Bronze Dragon is not super exciting. But at least we can take out Nico. I could kind of combo my two Planeswalkers to conjure Sheevan Dragon and then loot it away with Sarkon to maybe find something more exciting. Could deal three to one of their creatures. So they can flicker them with Lagrella. And then we can still minus two in the future, so killing Knight of Autumn might be fine. So let's try that. Sheevan Dragon kills Nico. And then I'll play another Sheevan Dragon, I guess. Make them use another board wipe. And then maybe play Sentinel Worm afterwards. That's gonna be Guard Mage first. And Lagrella going after the Bronze Dragon, I'm sure. And the Guard Mage as well. Okay, Old Nobun is exciting. So let us add some more mana. Play Nobun. And hit the opponent for... I guess I could have tapped differently so we can pump Sheevan Dragon since every damage is gonna translate into an extra treasure, so no reason not to. Okay. So get 13 treasure. And do we want to replay Sentinel Worm or keep some leftovers? I guess we'll keep some leftovers. Do we want to kill Lagrella? Get our Ancient Bronze Dragon back. Don't think so. If they play Sweeper now, at least we get something back. And um, I guess we'll just conjure a Sheevan Dragon. And I can play it. Still have plenty of treasures. Okay. Make them answer the board. And then next turn we can maybe combo off with our Sentinel Worm some more. I really want some Haste Enabler to fully take advantage of the extra mana. But it's got five cards in hand. A Yorion to flicker everything, yeah. Ok, 
get our bronze dragon back temporarily. They might go after Nobo now instead. And teleportation circle, also quite scary with Yorion in play. Alright, so the flicker fun is taking place. But let's see if we can overpower them. So just Nawbone getting exiled here. And Soaring City, a nice pickup. Okay, so I can try and deal three to Lagrella to get our Nawbone back before doing anything else. Although I should maybe play Sentinel Worm first, so we actually get double Nawbone. And then we still have Soaring City available in case of any shenanigans. And let us attack. Could also bounce Yorion now, but we'll see if they want to set up a double block maybe on the Ancient Bronze Dragon. But nope, opponent has seen enough. Gonna hit them for a ton of damage, make a ton of treasures. And then we could maybe keep looting with Sarkon. Could have also used it for mana here instead, but uh, yeah, the Sarkon's kind of carrying us to victory after facing multiple sweepers. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Nalia, a new commander from Baldur's Gate, so kind of a party deck. This hand's not gonna do with only blue mana. This is better. Turn to idol, place Dragon's Horde on three at the very least, which will make green for Cultivate, and we'll be off to the races. His opponent on kind of a creature party deck. Hopefully isn't going to present too much interaction to disrupt our game plan. And then we can eventually go over the top with our dragon synergies. At least that's the hope. On the flip side, we're also not packing too much in the way of interaction. So if the opponent completes a party qu pretty quickly, then we're going to be under a lot of pressure from their commander. Okay. For now, play idle. Can maybe make use of Mindstone the turn we play it, as it enters untapped. So we'd love to draw land, but uh, at least we've got our ramp artifacts. Okay, so it's gonna be Dragon's Horde. And then next turn we can maybe cultivate plus Mindstone, which sets up our Sentinel Worm on the following turn. Spellbinder is gonna disrupt our curve. They might go for one of our ramp cards, since we have so many dragons in hand. But, uh, yep, opponent goes for Cultivate. So yeah, we're already under quite a bit of pressure. Could just take a turn off playing a Desert Doom to kind of stem the bleeding. Opponent has two of four party types in play with two clerics. So Desert Doom would do a reasonable job of kind of holding off the attacks, except for Null Priest with Menace. And then we can kind of reassess next turn how we want to proceed. Or we can maybe even play Cultivate for 5. And then go for Sentinel Worm first, which also has a bit of built-in protection. So, close call. I think I'll go for Desert Doom since I don't want to take a ton more damage here. And then hope they cannot complete a party this turn. Awakener is a one mana wizard, so three out of four types. Okay, no land means no Sentinel Worm this turn. So probably just cultivate then over anything else. Get forest plus mountain. And pass it back. Land 4, so most likely gonna see a full party here with a warrior. 
Another new addition from Baldur's Gate. Quite powerful with double strike. And our opponent sends a team. Happy to trade for the commander. And then still taking quite the hit here. Okay. So we could go for Dracoseth, which if it survives can wreak havoc on the opponent's board next turn. If the opponent plays an extra land, replays Analia, then we're probably just dead. Let's see, if Dracoseth is played, we can block their 3-5 double strike. We would still take exactly 9, so it doesn't actually let us live. What if I play Verix with Kicker? That might be the play. Although we're chumping the double strike creature, which is not exactly where we want to be. But if it keeps us alive, it's probably the play. We have how much mana? Six, seven, eight. Yeah, not quite enough for anything else, but we can play Mindstone first. Okay. Alternatively, could have tried to draw with Dragon Sword, hoping to find something to interact here. There's a land, so they can replay Analia. Or they can try to uh, specialize here. Which can seek a card. But yeah, they're just gonna replay their commander. Pumps the team, opponent attacks, so we have to block the double striker, otherwise we're dead. And uh, trade for Spellbinder, take seven still. Could use a Reverse Rebuke here to reset the board. So, is there any other way to survive? Don't think so. So just need to get lucky with this Dragon's Horde. Key to the Archive, if that hits a Time Warp, can we play it? Think we'll be one mana short. So that doesn't do it. So then I guess we draw with Mindstone in the hopes of still finding something to interact. A land. That's not going to be good enough. So we can play our commander, we can key, see what we would draw. But uh don't think anything saves us. Counterspell, Doomblade, Crozen Grip is not going to be good enough here. All right, GG's. So yeah, the party deck got a full party early on, which is what we wanted to avoid. And couldn't quite get our Drunkoseth in play to stabilize. Glyphweaver to protect the team. And more plus one counters and death touch. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Missing green mana for Into the North, but we've got a few draw steps to maybe find it, and uh, if not, we still have turn 3 orb. If we find any land, so probably worth a shot. Facing Itali, Primal Storm, so they're also gonna maybe try and give it haste. Mindstone for ramp. Still no green mana, sadly. And stockpile, so opponents are ramping nicely. Although missing a third land, it seems. Rabbit battery for haste. That one we could take out, but opponent missing one damage, no huge deal. So, yeah, I don't think we need to kill rabbit battery right now. Let's get uh, one of our orbs in play, and then I guess we'll play the red one, even though we are potentially exposing it to removal. That's the one we definitely want to have access to. So they won't quite be able to play Itali this turn. But a Goldspan Dragon is no slouch. And then next turn... 
they could potentially have enough for a tally plus equip, but if we kill Goldspan, let's see, they get an extra treasure. Although, never mind, the alchemy version does not generate extra treasure if we target it. So, could also Glorybringer take out Bantry, but killing Goldspan seems better. Could also keep up uh, Soaring City to bounce Itali. So we have options. Kind of liking playing Orb plus Spitflame, the Goldspan here. And then I'll do it now. Goldspan down. And now they can play Itali, and they'll need an extra land to equip it with battery. So it's going to be a foreboding statue to make more mana. And Goro Goro, another haste enabler. Okay, so they're setting up for next turn. We're just going to play Sentinel Worm. And then keeping it on defense, it does get a counter here. Um, but Itali would also get pumped by the battery, so it would still trade. So probably fine to give it haste and uh, smash... And then next turn, maybe double Glory Bringer. Alternatively, again, could keep up Soaring City. But that's not as exciting as just playing our commander. And then, uh, not gonna pay for Spit Flame, just play a Tapped Canal. And keep Soaring City available. And hope Itali doesn't reveal anything too powerful. But yeah, we do have some Ancient Dragons it could hit. But if they don't, then uh, next turn Glorybringer is going to be quite powerful. Opponents hit a Sealed Nurture, not too bad. So we take 9 down to 10. And now it's party time. So double Glorybringer. And then we can still into the north. Looks good. And then do we pay for Spit Flame? Yeah, maybe that's actually better than going for Into the North, or we can just play Soaring City and a ramp. And then Exert, Exert, dealing damage to Itali, and then do we keep Sentinel Worm back on defense? That's maybe better, otherwise Goro Goro could do some damage. Although we're close to killing the opponent if we hit them for uh, 12 plus 4 is 16. We could maybe kill them next turn, but keeping this back is probably still safer. But yeah, opponent has seen enough. Double glory bringer. Enough to prompt a concession. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Facing Adlin, white aggro could be quite scary. At least we've got an early blocker, bit of ramp, missing a tour 3 mana ramp card. So that's kind of unfortunate, but I think this is still a keep. The 4 mana ramp cards can get us to our Sentinel Worm on the following turn, potentially. And a Dragon's Fire is nice. Can take out Adelin. So play this on blue, so we can play our Scale Singer. Arcane Signet, probably worth playing now instead. And then next turn we can play one of our 4 mana ramp cards, or Dragon's Fire Adlin. If we feel like we're under too much pressure, Tapland's gonna hurt him here. Ginger Brutes plus Witness, so very low curve deck as expected. We don't have a lot of sweepers, so we'll have to go over the top some other way. I think here I prefer Vastwood Surge over Key in case they have an answer to it. Although they're most likely playing Adlin. And then get red and green, probably. And the plan is Sentinel Worm before Ancient Bronze Dragon. Although if they play Adlin, we might have to deal with it before proceeding to play our own commander. Take 4 down to 18. Desert Doom's not bad. So if I play Sentinel Worm, I can't do anything else. Whereas we could 
play Key to the Archive and Dragon's Fire, or we could play Skill Singer and it's like a Desert Doom maybe. Problem with playing Sentinel Worm is if they can remove it next turn, would have to be a pretty cheap removal spell, but there are definitely a few examples. And then we would take a ton of damage and probably be too far behind to recover. So that's bad. So kind of liking the uh, Dragon's Fire play and then probably Desert Doom to present a blocker that's difficult for the opponent to remove. And then I think we wait until beginning of combat probably. Even their opponent could have some instant speed protection spells for Adeline as well. Just so they wouldn't be able to replay Adeline to maybe make more tokens. It's going to be Conclave Tribunal with the full Convoke here so they can pay for Ward. Yep. So let that happen and then Dragon's Fire Adlin. So yeah, it would have been bad if we played our Sentinel Worm. And then uh, no need to reveal an extra dragon. Keep that information to ourselves. Okay, so now I feel a bit better about playing Sentinel Worm. Although still wouldn't be able to play anything alongside it since our land comes into play tapped. But so be it. Surprised they didn't just attack with a team to get in some damage since they would get a replacement 1 1 anyways. But I'm not complaining. Double Ancient Bronze Dragon looks appealing. And uh, then we can play a Skill Singer as well if we tap our mana properly. So that should stabilize us nicely. Feel comfortable attacking for 6. And yeah, hopefully roll some D20s next turn. Although there are some kind of one-sided sweepers they could have. To kill larger creatures. Just a Dawn Feather Eagle, that's fine. And our opponent explodes. Sadly, don't get to roll our d20s here, as is often the case. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and it's another mirror match. We have a decent hand. We've got the ramp, and we've got rhythm for haste. Just missing the dragons. But going idle into Key to the Archive could be a great start, although we'll need another untap plan for that to work. There we go. Put in playing the Snarls, that's a cycle of duels I did not include in this build. They've got the Signets, so an equal start so far. And then what do we want? Demonic Tutor is probably good enough here. Next turn we can go Archive plus Rhythm, or we can already play Sentinel Worm. Opponent's got more ramp. So now that we drew Town Razor, playing Sentinel Worm is a little bit more appealing, although we still have to watch out for counter spells. And playing Rhythm is one way to circumvent those. So I'm sort of liking Archive plus Rhythm here. And pass it back. Suppose we could have maybe tapped a little differently to then Demonic Tutor as well with the mana from Archive and look up one of our Ancient Dragons now that we have Rhythm in play. But that's alright, we'll just go Ancient Dragon and then we can double Town Racer Tyrants. And then probably plus one counter to block opposing Sentinel Worms. And then this one can also get counters. Target their Breeding Pool and Cascade.
Terror of the Peaks, that's a scary one, times two. Takes out our Tyrants. Okay, so we might have to Demonic Tutor for a Rivers Rebuke instead. Put and take some damage. And an Orb the draw. Well, we can start with Tutor and then see what we're working with. We'll have five, six, seven, eight mana to work with. So I could grab one of my Ancient Dragons and give him haste, although Ponan does have quite a few blockers. So I'm not sure we can get anything that saves us necessarily. Although maybe Dracoseth could get there. Double Dracoseth. One of them will have haste thanks to Riot. And then we can take out one Terror of the Peaks. Is that enough? Yeah, it's certainly a start. Otherwise we can get Rivers Rebuke, bounce everything. Attack for 11. Send the opponent back to the Stone Ages, basically. I think that's going to be slightly better. Although maybe not quite as exciting. And then we can maybe even activate Guardian Idol here, if we're careful. Although we might be a mana short. This is uh, two to activate. So I guess in that case we'll play Orb into Reverse Rebuke. That works. They can float some mana on the way out if they'd like. But yeah, we're hitting for 11. They still need to pay a life for their lands. And next turn we can keep up the pressure and our opponent concedes, so yeah, another quick mirror match here, but Demonic Tutor into Reverse Rebuke seals the deal. Alright, we're on the play, facing Tasha, Unholy Archmage, so one of the new additions from Baldur's Gate. Okay, what do we think of our opener? Not quite as good as I would like, since Orb does not let us play our Planeswalkers on turn 3, and we're missing green for Explorer, so we'll take a free mulligan. And yeah, this could be better. Start with probably a Fabled Passage, fetching maybe a second blue or second red. Let's go with second red for uh, Terror of the Peaks. We'll have time to find more blue for Rebuke. And then can play this tapped, turn three Fable. So not the fastest ramp start here, but our late game is looking good. And a Fable is always nice value. So could be a matchup where we don't want access to Rebuke, since the opponent's probably more of a control deck, not going to present a ton of permanence for us to bounce. Arcane Signets. And Dismissal bouncing our token. What do we discard? I think Rebuke is reasonable. And then... What do we think of Skill Singer? Could be okay to provide more card advantage. Kinda wanna hang on to Silver Dragon just to hope to be able to connect with it. Um, but we do need a bit more mana to get there in the first place. So maybe Skill Singer is just too slow here. And a hot spring is exactly what we wanted. So we'll play that over Town Razor Tyrants, although another interesting choice actually. Yeah, if we play Hot Spring and next turn Tyrant with haste, they could potentially uh, shrink it down, so we don't necessarily kill their commander. Although we could also give our Reflection Haste, which is interesting. So maybe actually playing Tyrant now is fine. Even though our opponent doesn't have non-basics for us to target. Because then next turn we could play Hot Spring, put a counter on Reflection to copy Tyrants, and take out their commander. Moon 
Moonvale region is also pretty good. So not getting full value out of our tyrants, but at least we can take out their commander. Reflection down. Migration path looks good. So we'll just hit for three, save our counters for later. And keep on ramping. Getting one more red source, and I guess green's fine. Next turn, maybe player Sentinel Worm. And once we have more of a board state, we can time warp to take advantage of that uh, extra board presence. Assassin's Inc. takes care of our tyrant, that's okay. And an egg. So next turn they could replay their commander. And then they could maybe steal one of our dragons. But uh, yeah, Sentinel Worm looks good here, can give it haste, hit for seven. And double Tower of the Peaks is going to be pretty exciting. Might be able to close out the game next turn already. Although kind of want to wait until we can get our Silver Dragon going. Kyura can maybe prevent some damage. Untap our Sentinel Worm. Or they can make a Kraken. Although they'll need to make a Kraken first. This is just a Serpent Egg. So opponent makes an 0-4 Kraken Hatchling. And passes with 3 mana up. So they probably have a counter at the ready, so we'll have to decide what we want them to counter. We don't quite have enough mana to double spell. I guess we can go for like a Desert Doom, which can also draw cards if it hits the opponents. And I'm okay if it gets countered. Alright, resolved. Make a copy. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, just uh, too much ward for them to maybe interact with. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hand seems acceptable. Turn 3 Horde, turn 4 Surge, up against Gishoth, so also kind of a ramp deck, but dinosaurs instead of dragons, so it's gonna be an epic fight. No 2 mana ramp, sadly, which does make a big difference. If we can ramp on 2, we can Surge on 3, and then maybe play our Sentinel Worm turn 4 already, although Goldspan could be a nice turn for play as well. Okay, so turn three horde, turn four gold span is the plan currently. Opponent's got the signet on two, so they're off to a slightly better start. Wrathful Red Dragon could also be great in this matchup where creatures and maybe damage based removal is involved. Sortooth can help them ramp as well, and a priest. Okay. Well, I think it's still gold span here over anything else. Make a treasure, and maybe next turn we can play our Sentinel Worm. They'll gain a bit of life, revealing a Burning Sun's avatar. Three damage, not enough to kill Goldspan, at least. Sigarda Splendor. Okay. Next up, yeah, I think Sentinel Worm can maybe attack first. Use two treasures. And then we'll still have the mana for Townraiser Tyrant, I believe. So we can make immediate use of our commander's ability. And our opponent has seen enough. Too quick of a start and Sentinel Worm, once it's in play, can take over very quickly. Double Wrathful Red Dragon next turn was also going to be too much for them to overcome. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, facing a Rishkar, Pima, Renegade, so a green counters deck. And our hand's okay, although we won't be able to play Chandra on turn 3. Still probably a keep. Thanks to Cultivate, getting double reds. And being on the play also helps. Turn 1 Sentinel. Can generate a bit of extra mana. So your opponent's gonna be off to a pretty quick start. And then we'll have to try and go over the top with our dragons. Probably gonna start with Goldspan to generate more mana. So we can get our commander going. Time Warp's not bad either. So we'll get double mountain. Playing Snowlands because of Into the North, but technically could just play a couple Snowlands since even some of our dual lands like Rhymewood Falls are indeed Snowlands. So we could just play regular basics if we'd like. Not too many ways to punish playing Snowlands. Alright, opponent playing Monuments to discount their green creatures and plays a whole bunch of mana creatures out. Lightning Bolt, nice draw as well. Well, I can play Goldspan. And then we can still bolt something if we'd like. Or we can time warp just to take an extra draw step, although that's not too exciting. I think gold span over Terror of the Peaks, which was another option. And then do I even want a lightning bolt anything? They don't have any food, so if we do it's probably Incubation Druids. Or we can just wait to kill Rishkar. Let's pass. Plus, I can also use the treasure to just cast our commander, maybe. Although, I guess if they want to put a counter on Incubation Druids, so it can make three mana instead of one, then we might want to intervene. So yeah, I guess now I'm probably fine bolting. That worked. And then I can still make one mana with Sentinel. Next turn we could play Chandra, adding double red and still play a Time Warp. As our opponent plays a cheap Stone Coil and hits us for six. Yeah, I'm liking the Time Warp Chandra plan, which just adds the most mana for the extra turn we'll take. And then we'll still have double blue. And untapping with a gold span and a planeswalker feels quite powerful. Okay, what's next? Can play our commander. Well, opponent has seen enough. So yeah, we could attack. And then we have essentially nine mana total if we count the treasure plus Chandra. So not quite enough to play two dragons. But yeah, we could get our commander down and then set up maybe doubling our Terror of the Peaks or Draquiseth, which would probably win the game for us. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first Sliver. So potentially Sliver Tribal, but could also be some sort of combo deck. Our hand's okay. Turn to Orb, Cultivate for Ramp. Faceless Agent can find another Dragon. Now if it is a Sliver Tribal deck, yeah, it's going to be close if we can get off to a quick start and maybe find some dragons that can offer a bit of interaction. We might be okay, but once the sliver deck gets rolling, it's pretty hard to stop, and our deck doesn't have a ton of interaction necessarily, so it could be a close game. Okay, opponent's playing a land naming sliver, so I assume it is sliver tribal. And then we can cultivate here, and probably wants as much red mana as possible for Drakuseth now. Although I guess we already have triple red, so maybe could use an untapped blue source in case we pick up like a reverse rebuke. And then next turn we can play Sentinel Worm already. Nazis can have a look, probably takes Drakuseth. Nope, goes for the orb. 
Well, at least Sentinel Worm has a bit of built-in protection with wards, so they wouldn't be able to kill it end of turn. And uh, no way for them to counter it with this mana. So, yeah, play Sentinel Worm. And with an untapped land, we can play Dracoseth next turn. If not, Double Agent also looks good. So unless they've got some one or two mana removal, we'll get to untap with our commander. And uh, first sliver still two turns away, at least. All right, they've got the fourth land. And rally the ranks to pump their creatures. For now, Impostor not too threatening, and there's untap land, so... Could see removal on one Dracoseth, but we're getting a copy here, so... Hit for six. So they'll need some non-creature interaction, probably, to stabilize. Just a first sliver, hoping for the best. Cascades into a Pillar of Origins. That's not gonna do it, and next turn an attack would already be lethal. Yeah, that's a fast and brutal game against a sliver deck. So yeah, overall, this uh, Teamer Dragon's deck does not mess around and seems like one of the better Brawl decks at the moment. Of course, we didn't face some of the higher tier Brawl decks out there, so once maybe they change the matchmaking a little bit and matches against Kinon and the Fairy decks, it's going to be a different story. But for now, enjoy this Sentinel Worm deck while you can. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.